Um, I, I'm, I'm just tired of it being the thing that's holding people back from being real and being themselves and just being authentic. Like y'all, you, you are an amazing person. Like, do you know that about yourself? Like, do y'all know that about yourself? Do you know how amazing you are? How incredible you are? That you were designed for a specific purpose. You were designed to do something incredible. And I, I'm tired of seeing people not be okay with that. Like, not live up to that. Come on here. Thank you. How are you doing? It's so good to see you. Her mighty, sometimes I forget, then I recharge. You recharge, you forget, you forget how amazing you are. And then you recharge. Is that what you're saying? So we are going to talk about the steps to getting unshy. If y'all are here and you're familiar with the um, <clears throat> the content I've been putting out lately, I, I went through all the steps of getting unshy. You're good. Try not to lose your voice. Well, that's good. How's everybody else doing today? We went through the steps. <clears throat> but then somebody was like, can you break this down? Because I got questions. Hey, bam, because I got questions. And so I was like, yeah, we can definitely talk about it and we can break it down because why not? Why not? I was going to save it um, for, you know, the workshop or the masterclass. But um, a couple of things happened. So the first thing that happened is that I realized that it, it could definitely be unpacked and it's a lot to unpack. Right. Like it's a lot of different things within the steps to talk about and discuss. And I feel like when people have their questions answered, then it helps them to recognize whether or not they need more support with it. Right. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is that um, I really could use y'all help. OK, I really can use your help. And so one of the things that I wish that I had time to do is to send this to the people who already signed up on the email list. I hope that they're able to make it in because maybe they get the notifications and they see that I'm on here. But um, I really want to I really want to see like what we can put together as a collective that is going to help us to really like move through this and make some things happen so that we can get unshy for real because getting unshy is not one of those things that is an easy process and I will not pretend like it is and it's also one of those things that is done best in community it really is and so I want to make sure that I'm doing it justice and I'm not just putting something out there for the sake of putting it out there you know what I mean so I felt like you know what this would be a good way for us to get it out there, for us to ask questions, and for us to really just understand what this process will look like so that we can actually get unshy, right? So I want to tell everybody thank you. Um, you know, we're here and clearly a lot of people feel the same way. So I'm glad that you're here. So the first thing is this, the first step is whether you are shy or whether you're wounded, okay? And so in the comments, y'all, um, I want you to let me know, do you consider yourself to be shy or are you wounded? And as you're thinking about it, I'm going to describe what the differences are. OK, so when you look at the word shy, shy means that you are timid. It means that you are shameful. It means that you are hidden. Right. Those are the things that are attributed to being a shy person. And so you'll see people say stuff like reserved or um um quiet but the the thing with those is that it it is almost like a reflection of like how you portray yourself when you're shy but it doesn't address the real issue the real symptoms okay and so i'm gonna challenge you i'm gonna challenge everybody to pick one okay because i see i see both and i want you to pick one pick one because if you if you say that you are shy if you say that you're shy, you are making it a part of your DNA. You're making it a part of who you are. You are making it something that is basically associated with your identity, right? If you say that you are wounded, wounds heal. Hey, Bullock, wounds heal. Wounds can be addressed. Wounds can be redirected and it doesn't have to become, it can become a part of your story, but it doesn't have to become a part of your identity, okay? And so that's why when um that's why that's the very first step 
because if you are somebody who you say I'm shy and you're just like that's just who I am then the other steps aren't going to be relevant to you okay it's not going to be relevant and the thing that's going to be scary y'all is that it is almost like um when you remove like something that you've considered to be a part of yourself for so long it's scary because it's almost like well who am I now without it right like who am I now that I don't have this piece of me to identify with or to make make a part of my identity. And so <clears throat> I see Mel say, I would say wounded. Family members made me feel like my voice was not important. Good, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go with wounded, then ain't claiming that shy mess no more, period. Like, cause we're not, we're not. And in, in order for you to get unshy, you have to first decide that you're not. You have to decide that it is not a part of your original makeup. It's not a part of your original design. It was never what you were supposed to be, right? And so um, so here's how I came to this conclusion, y'all, um, which I kind of touched on in the video, but I didn't um, really go into detail about like the, the specific time where that ha where I realized this. Okay. So I told y'all about the conference. I went to that uh, retreat rather. I went to the retreat and the woman told me that my confidence was going to be the thing that kept me, that held me back in my business. So when she said that, I was like, oh, mm -mm. like I'm not going to be the reason that I'm not going to be the one blocking my own blessings. Right. And so after that, I started to do this work, but I didn't know what that work looked like yet. I just knew, I just knew what I knew to do, which is journal <laughs> and pray. <laughs> like I, I, after that, I really didn't know what that looked like. And so as I was journaling, um, God led me to make this list. And I wish that I had the journal y'all because the journal is so powerful, but I had this journal and in the journal, I, he told me to write down everything. Hey, Thomas. He told me to write down everything that I had been saying about myself that was um, in, in opposition with who I really was. Cue the tears. <laughs> Hi, Adrian. Cue the tears. I was, I was already undone before I wrote the list, right? And so this was the part that was really scary, y'all, because I had to write down all the things that was replaying in my head that I was saying about myself that were really nasty things y'all like it was it was things that uh, some of the stuff is like i wouldn't even say this to another person that's how bad it was and so the very first thing on that list is i am not shy okay and so the thing that was important about this list for me because this is what i believe so it, it anchors me right is that um whenever i wrote down something that was in opposition with who i was created to be i had to have a scripture that supported this right and so that scripture for i am not shy was a scripture that i referenced about not having the spirit of fear but of love discipline of love uh Discipline and sound mind. I think I missed the word there. I'm gonna I'm look it up so I can say it the right way. But um, yeah, hold on, hold on, because I'm gonna say it for real. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah. And so when I saw that, um, other other like versions of it will be like you know timidity. And uh, when I looked up the, the words that were associated with it timid and shy or, or like synonyms right and so I was sitting here and I was thinking and I was like man well if I'm not shy why have why have I been calling myself that and it became one of those things to me where it was almost like a cuss word you know like for real like it, it was almost as offensive as calling me out my name because that's not how I was created and so when I saw that it really challenged me because for for so long, it, it has been this thing that we have just said about people. We have just said that about ourselves. We have said that about others. Y'all, she's just shy. Why do we do that? You know what I mean? Like, why, does it, why has this become something that we have just been comfortable doing and saying when this word literally tells us that we were not created that way? God did not give us that. 
So if he if he didn't give it to me, why have I taken it on as a part of my identity? And so when I saw that, that was we were taught that yeah. You have the ability to fully master and control who you are. Shyness goes because it's not you. Exactly. And that's what I had to realize that it's not me. And the thing that was scary for me, though, y'all, is that if I'm not shy, then who am I? <laughs> like having power, love, sound mind. What? That all sounds like hard work. <laughs> that all sounds like things that I'm not used to seeing in myself. And so the, the, it was so interesting because um, the moment that I declared that I'm not shy, that's when I started to really get challenged in my visibility and in showing up the way that I needed to. Hey, Kuma, that's where I started to see um, all of the steps that I needed to take in order to build my platform. And so at this time, I was I have been an influencer for about like two years already. And so the thing that's so weird about it, y'all, is that I was literally like hiding in plain sight. I was creating content, I was showing up, but my content was, if I'm being real, y'all, my content was dry. It was dry. The only personality that it had in it was the style that I, I the outfit that I styled. I didn't have my voice in there. It didn't look different than anybody else's content. And I was also wondering why I wasn't growing. Like, make that make sense. <laughs> I literally was not being myself and wondering why nobody was noticing me. Wondering why things weren't moving and progressing the way that I needed them to. Right. And so all of those things started to become more apparent to me. Hey, Trail, all those things started to become more apparent to me as I went through this process. And so the thing that um, the, the whole uh, question that I had of are you shy or are you wounded came from this um, this conference that I went to. And when she said it, it had already kind of been like something that was on my mind right like this idea of being shy but then she asked the question she's like are you shy or are you wounded you know like did something happen to you that caused you to be quiet did something happen to you that caused you oh thank you that's so cute <laughs> did something happen to you that made you feel like you weren't worthy enough that you couldn't be accepted for who you were oh that thank you trail those are adorable and so when she said that i was like oh my god like no, seriously, I I am wounded. There have been times where people told me, hey, Tia, hey, Blam. There were times where people told me, we don't want to hear what you got to say. You can keep that. Nobody, nobody, nobody wants to hear that. Jada, mind your business. I don't want to do that. Why are you talking to me? You know, like things like that, things that really had me feeling like, well, am I saying something wrong? Like, I don't want to offend people. I don't want to, I don't want people to, you know, not want to be around me and it was this thing where y'all i've always kind of been like this person that i am now and if y'all know me you already know like it's a little uncomfortable around me because i'm going to challenge you i can't help it <laughs> i can't help it i'm going to challenge you because because like do you want to stay here and all you know what i'm saying and and it's like not to be like so cut and dry with it but that's just the way that i am like you can't be around me and not want to be better you can't be around me and not want to grow you're going to be uncomfortable around me right and that's something that i just had to accept and you know there are things that i learned how to do which i can get into at another time but right now we're just talking about me owning who I am because that was a part that I was afraid to show people. I would hold back, I would bite my tongue, I would be so irritated because people would come around me and be like, oh, Jada's around, don't do that, don't say that. Or you you making me feel like I gotta get up and work out now. You making me feel like I gotta go up and start this business. I Now I, now I feel like I gotta post content because you posting content. Hi, Amani. Like, that's the kind of stuff that people would say to me and I would be so irritated by it. I'm like, no, just just be yourself. Just be who you are. And I realized that it's just because of the way that I am. That's what I'm called to do. 
And so the thing that I, I, I realized is that I, I don't have to be quiet. I don't have to hold back. I just have to know who can be around me and who can't. And, you know, for the most part, people make that decision themselves, right? And it's not up to me to try to conform and fit into what people feel comfortable with, to what people feel like un, unchallenged by or unbothered by. That's not my job. That's not my job. My job is to make sure that you are the best version of yourself if that is the decision that you make, right? So that was how this whole thing came together, right? But the, the, it began with the declaration, I am not shy, okay? And so that's what I want everybody here. If you're still here and you're listening to this and you're like, I don't, I don't want to be shy anymore, declare it right now. And as a matter of fact, I want everybody to declare it. In the comment section, I want you to put, I am not shy. If you are bold enough to make that declaration right now, I am not shy. And that's where you start. I see you, Bullock. I am not shy. I may be wounded. I may be bruised. I may have some things that rub me the wrong way. I got some healing that I want to do, but I'm not shy because that's not how I was created. That's not what I was created to do. Okay. I see. I'm waiting for some more people to see, to say it. I am, I am not shy. There we go. Cardi, I see you. I am not shy. We're not shy. Okay. We just got some stuff we got to work on and that's fine because we can do that. And that's what I'm here for. Okay. So the next part to this. Um, number two is acknowledging the lies you've been telling yourself. And so this part, y'all, is um, it, it's kind of in line with what I described as the activity that I did. And so I really want y'all to see that this is a process that I literally walked through. Okay? Like, this is not some stuff that I just pulled out of thin air. I didn't Google this. I've walked this out. I mean, there's, I can reference many parts of my life where this has been, this has been the, um, the journey that I went through. Okay. And so acknowledging the lies that I've been telling myself, Hey pastor, how you doing? Um, acknowledging the lies that I told myself, um, was a really big step of the process because that is the part where things started to really like, um, get revealed. Hey, timeless. And so the thing that happens, um, I'm not accepting any guests right now, y'all. I will accept people up a little bit later. So if you have questions for me, um, but, you know, just hang out with me. And if you want to ask me something or if you want to share your thoughts on it, then I'll let you up. And so the the thing that the thing that this does is it, it you're confronting it. OK, and so the thing that's interesting about people who are shy is that most of us also don't like confrontation. How many of us are like that? I know I'll be the first to admit that confrontation makes me super uncomfortable. <laughs> it makes me so uncomfortable. I just want stuff to get resolved without me. Like, figure it out and, and leave me out of it, right? The, but it's so funny that that's like the next step is is literally a confrontation. Like you are confronting all of the things that you've been saying about yourself over and over and over again. And so when you look at it on paper, it's one of those things that really um, um, it can be it can be triggering. OK, and and triggering, but. It's, nece it's a necessary trigger, okay? And so we talk about triggers and that's a whole nother tangent. But the thing that I will say about triggers is that triggers just tell you where you are. They, they let you know, hey, something's wrong here. This is touching on something. This is making you uncomfortable. This is bringing up some kind of memories for you. But this, there's something there, right? It's like a warning sign. And so the thing that makes triggers dangerous is how we respond or how we react to them, okay? But being triggered is just a part of life. We're going to get triggered by stuff. Like that's just that's just the way life is. But the thing about seeing it on paper and acknowledging it is now you get a chance to um confront it and and change your association with it and and understand what is happening, you know? Like it's like you get to look at it and you get to see it 
because for many of us, this is stuff that we have pushed down deep, 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 deep down. Like it's things that we're just not dealing with. It's stuff that we, we have maybe even forgot about, like repressed memories. That's a real thing, y'all. I know some of you know it, like people who are familiar with, you know, psychology, like, you know, repressed memories are a real thing. And so the thing that happens, though, is that although it's repressed, it's still doing its work. It's still impacting you. It's still affecting you. You're just not acknowledging it. Right. And so for a lot of us, even if we can determine like, you know, an instance, thank you, Tia, an instance where this came from or like a time frame where this came from, there there's usually specific things that stand out to us that were really traumatic events for us. Thank you, Bullock. I mean, like really traumatic events. And so the thing that I shared, um, another lie that I was telling myself is that um, when I try, I lose. When I try, I fail. And that was associated with the fact that I didn't finish college. And so um, I've told this story before. I'm, I'm not going to go into all the details of it because I, I can share that another time. But the gist of it is that um, I lost a scholarship, a really big scholarship that, that covered my tuition. And so the reason why I lost the scholarship was on me. You know, I, I lost it. And although the circumstances that led to it weren't my fault, the, you know, the things that had the way that I moved, it, it just led to me losing my scholarship. And so I lost my scholarship, even though I worked super hard and got my grades up and and all of this stuff. And so when um, that happened, I was devastated. That was a very traumatic event for me. And so in this devastation and in all of this, you know, shame and and just disappointment, I, I internalized that like failure. I internalized it as like the truth of who I am, as the truth of my circumstances. And so when I would try to do something, I would be like, no, because you, you didn't finish college. You remember that? You remember when you tried real hard and you didn't get that scholarship and now look at you, a college dropout? You know what I'm saying? Like, those are the kinds of stuff that I was saying about myself. And so when it came to me starting a business, hey, Unc, when it came to me starting a business, oh, and hey, Evanor, um, I, I had that same narrative playing in my head. And although I had like repressed those feelings, like they were still like kind of like deep down, um, it was still at play. It was still informing my decisions. And so being able to see it, to look at it and confront it allows you to change the narrative and it allows you to create new experiences for yourself that take the the power the negative power that it has and and turn it into something good turn it into something productive right so that's why the next step number two is to acknowledge the lies you've been telling yourself okay so y'all let me know are y'all following me so far is this making sense you understanding let me know. You can give me like a thumbs up or say yes. <laughs> uh, and let me know if I'm going too fast or anything like that or if you have any questions about it. Because um, if not, we are going to go to the third one. Okay, good. Okay. I see lots of yeses. Lots of yeses. Cool. All right. So the next thing is to recognize the experience that triggers the lies. And so that goes head in hand with kind of what I was saying with the whole thing with college, right? And so when it comes to when it comes to me being shy, um the the shyness was associated with uh all of those it's actually a particular it's a particular it's a particular event that I can remember and not necessarily like one moment but a certain relationship that I had where um I felt like, oh boy, y'all, this is coming up in a moment. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> so here's, whew. okay. So here's, here is what, Lord, I don't want to talk about this. Okay. Let me get my tissue, y'all. Oh, boy. I did not know we was going to go here. Okay. In high school. In high school. Um, there's been multiple moments where uh, 
where um, things have happened where I use my voice and it was basically shut down, right? Um, but this particular instance in high school, um, there was a guy, it's always a guy, right? There was a guy that I really liked. Um, and, um, there was, there was an instance that we had where I, I, um, was essayed. Okay. And the thing that's so interesting about this experience, y'all, is that it's not, it's, it's happened at, at different times in my life, which is super frustrating. Right. Um, but this time in particular, um, I, it, it, when it happened, I didn't realize that that's what it was, you know, but it, it just felt wrong. It felt wrong. And it was confusing for me because this was a person that I really liked. But um, for him, the way that he felt about me, I believe that it was just kind of like a, almost like a, you know, like a conquering type mentality, right? And so it, it basically, like my feelings didn't really matter. And so um, when it happened, um, you know, I, I didn't really say much afterwards. I just kind of like, you know, kind of like, you know, went into myself and anybody who's going through the experience, you know what I'm talking about. I just kind of like, you know, went into myself and I just was like really quiet and just like, you know, okay. And I, I left, you know, I left. So afterwards, I, I tell my friend what happened. And I was just describing it to her. And, you know, I didn't use any of those words. I just was telling her about it. And so when I told her about it, she was like, Jada, that sounds like great. And I was like, what? No, because I know him. And it's not like how it happens in the movies, you know? This isn't, nah, that's not what happened. And so as she was describing it, she was like, well, you know, did you, did you say no? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, did you, did you want that? And I was like, no. And so she was like, that's, that's what it was. And so when she said that, I was like, kind of like taken aback. Cause I was like, man, um, I don't know what to do from here. You know, like, what do you do in that instance? Especially like being a, I think at this time I was a senior in, in high school, senior or maybe junior about to be a senior or whatever my second semester, um, somewhere around that age. And so when she said that, I was like, I just don't know. I don't know what to do about that. And so the thing that I thought to do was um, to confront him about it. You know, I was like, I want to talk to him about it. And I want to tell him how I feel because, um, you know, like, I just feel like he'll understand, right? This is a 17 year old boy that we're talking about. <laughs> He did not understand. And so the thing that he did, he basically, he basically like shut it down. He was like, no, that's not what happened. That's not what, that's not what happened. And so instead of, um, actually like talking it out with me and acknowledging it and taking accountability, he told me I was wrong and then completely shut down on me. Like completely, like wouldn't like stonewall me. I think that's what the term he stonewalled me didn't talk to me, wouldn't acknowledge me, nothing, right? And so in my mind, I'm like, whoa, so this is what happens when I speak up? No, thanks. Mm -mm. I'm good. I'm not going to say nothing else to nobody. I'm going to just keep it to myself because if this is what happens when I try to confront people, no, I'm just going to be quiet. I'm good. I'm good. You ain't got to worry about me. I'll just stop talking. And so I, I'm realizing now that that's, that's what happened even in high school. Cause I knew that it was high school and I knew that it was, um, I knew that it was like a particular, you know, time frame that I was quiet. And even before that, y'all, I just was more of like a quiet person, just, you know, just more reserved. Um, I wasn't afraid to speak to people though. You know, like I, I would talk to people, but, um, I just never really felt like I fit in, which was a, a different thing. But if if you wanted to talk to me, then you would. And so that was the difference. You know, I wasn't shy. People would think, you know, oh, she was antisocial or this or that. But I just really was just to myself. But if 
I wasn't afraid to speak up or talk to people, right? Um, but that time in particular, going into it, it was like, that was different. That was different. And so in this moment, I'm realizing that. I'm realizing that's what that's what happened. Wow. Wow. Hmm. Hey, Tashi. I need a minute, y'all. I need a minute. Oh, hey, mask. Thank you. Um, it's just making me realize how early on this, like, these, these, like, texts happen for us, you know? And it is, it happens so early in our lives that we just kind of accept it as, as just like a part of who we are. Not realizing that we were different people before the traumatic events. We were different people before these things happened to us. And um, recognizing that it's not who you are, it's just a wound really helps you to move past it. Your TikTok crush? Okay, mask. <laughs> um, I'm honored. And so, but it, it happened so early in our lives. Like so many of us, we were, we were shut down when we were kids. Like, think about that. We were shut down when we were children. And how many years of repression and unaddressing it? Hey, Siobhan, how many, how many years we've, we've tried to just go and go and go and not acknowledge it and not take a moment to question these things and challenge them and think, hold up. I don't think this is how I'm supposed to be. You know, I think there's something wrong with this. And to think about the way that it impacts all of these other things in your life and how you we get to these ages we get to our 30s and our 40s and our 50s and we're like hold up man like i i this is not helping me go where i want to go this is not helping me achieve these dreams that people tell me that i have like i don't see this for myself why don't i see this why does everybody else see this but me? And it's because these experiences have, have left a, an imprint on us. And it is, it's been holding us back because it's not a matter of, you know, just, you know, trying to make it happen. But it's a, it's a, it's a moment to heal. It's a moment to address it. It's a moment to acknowledge it. It's a moment to forgive yourself. It's a moment to say, hold up, I, I, I want to be different. I want to be better. What does that look like? What do I need to do? Because this is possible for me. This is possible for me to be this person who has this big platform. It's possible for me to be a millionaire if you're supposed to be a millionaire. It's possible for me to have these foundations and these nonprofits that help people across the country, across the world. It's possible. But these experiences have have happened in my life where I now doubt myself, but that was never supposed to be my story. Right. And so that's what that's that's where um, that's where that took me like, whoa, this is big. Like, can y'all feel that? Can y'all feel how major this is, how important this is? Hmm. Let me look and see what y'all were saying, and then we can go to the next part. I appreciate y'all. Take you on a date to the candy lady and get a frozen cup. <laughs> sure. 
This is why writing the story of games for black girls is so hard. Y'all go through so much. Yeah. Facts. I just realized how I act is based on something that happened 20 years ago. Wow. That's powerful, Anthony. That's powerful. Hmm. You can relate to this, Cardi? Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not where we were supposed to be. It's not who we were supposed to be. So... Thank you. I, I promise y'all, y'all saw firsthand. I did not want to talk about this. I was trying to be a thug. I was trying to keep keep the tears to a, to a minimum, uh, to a zero. I was not trying to share this, but it was just on my heart to share. Um, and if anybody wants to come up, y'all, let me get through the last two points and then um, we can come up and talk about it, okay? I want to get through them and then we can we can talk about what's going on. So um, please hang around and I would love to talk to y'all about it. And then trying to put in the work to reverse is another breakthrough. Yeah. And so this is where, this is where it really happens, y'all. Like the breakthrough really happens in this work. And it's, it's literally like steps to do it. It's literally steps to do it. There, there is, it's a way to move past this. And so, yeah. Stop catching them tears and in the fall. Well, they 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 not gonna stop, Siobhan. I'll tell you that. And I, one thing I don't do is I don't apologize for crying. I just don't be wanting to. <laughs> I don't be wanting to, but it's okay. It's gonna be worth it when I get this uh, Kleenex sponsorship. <laughs> but okay. So um, yeah, y'all. This is good. This is good. Um. Before I go into the next step, if you are recognizing, like even in this conversation, that this is something that you need, you need this, this space to be vulnerable, you need this space to, to grow and move through this, then I want y'all to make sure that you're signed up for getting unshy. There's a wait list and we're going to be working through this together. And at first it was going to be a masterclass and I made like the whole post about it and everything. But what I think that it needs to be is I think that it just needs to be um, almost like a group where we can just have these sessions together. Um, and, and everyone has an opportunity to have the same type of breakthrough and we can go through these steps, support one another, cheer each other on, and and really figure out what it looks like for you to no longer be shy, right? Because um, I'm only able to like do this and move through this, hey Niala, because of how long I've been doing it. Um, but even in this work, I have not been doing this by myself. I have not been doing this in isolation. And I feel like that's where a lot of us have been is that we've been doing this work by ourselves. We've been trying to figure this out by ourselves. Thank you so much. And so I want us to do this in a community space. And so I think that I don't think that a master class is going to fully um, support us the way that we need to. And so, um, yeah. So if you want to join, get on the wait list. OK, um, it will not be a it won't be a free thing. I can't make it free, but what I can do is make it um, make it where you can name your price. All right. So um, I'll when it's when it's launched, you'll see it. If you're on the list, you'll see I'm going I'm to set it so you can name the price that you can afford to be a part of it. And it's going to cost because this is an investment in you. OK, this is not something that I want to just open up to anybody. I want it to be people who are really ready to do the work. And I also want it to be a place where we, we feel safe and protected. OK, so the investment part is really important. But I, I do recognize that it can help to have a scale. So get on the wait list. If you're listening to this and you're like, man, I need this like yesterday. OK, so with all that said, we're going to get into the number four step, which is replacing the lies with the truth. OK, and so this part is not just about telling ourselves something positive. OK, this is about telling ourselves the truth, because what we've been saying to ourselves have been lies. So going back to what I said in the beginning, when I talked about us, um, when I talked about what I used when I made the list and I used scripture to ground me. 
because that's my faith. That's what I believe. And so I use scripture to 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 support what is what I was saying about myself. Thank you so much, Javon. Thank you for helping me reach the goal. And so this is important because when it comes to things like, you know, affirmations and, you know, these positive things that we hear people say, there's nothing wrong with being positive, but sometimes it's just not, it doesn't click for us because we don't realize, either we don't realize it's true about us or we don't, it's not, it's not for us, you know? And so one thing that helps with this, especially if you are somebody who is, you know, you have a faith that grounds you is using scripture because scripture refers to um, things that that show you how you were created, how you were designed, how you were meant to be. Right. But even in that, if that's not something that is relevant to you, then you go to things that are true about yourself. Have if you um, if you have experiences where you've done things that clearly show you that you're not a shy person for me. That was when I when I look back at like um, elementary school, I actually was in a lot of plays. So I I don't I never really pursued like acting um, or entertainment. Um, somewhere along the lines, I started feeling like I couldn't do it because it didn't make sense with fashion for me. Um, I was just being really linear in my thinking. But I used to be in plays. I used to be in musicals. Um, I was. Um, Sneezy, the Sneezy Dwarf in like one of the school plays, like this really big play that um, they put on. I was a part of this showcase that I had to I had to um, audition for, you know, like I've always had like this this talent when it came to performing and being on stage. And so those were the things that I could refer to and look back at that would show me I'm clearly not a shy person. You know, I'm not shy. I can get up. I can talk. I can speak. I can be on stage and um, I can I can represent myself well. So if that's the truth about who I am, what happened, you know, in the midst of that, that has me believing that that's no longer me. Right. So, yeah. Come on, Sneezy. Yeah, I, I, I did good, too. I was a good Sneezy. <laughs> and so that's that's what that's what I had to start referring to. And so for people, for everybody else that's listening, maybe you don't have something that specific, but you can have times where someone has told you, you know, you are really you're really funny or you are really um, you're really good at coming up with business strategies or you're really good at, at marketing people's businesses are, are, um, yeah, marketing, or you are, um, really inspirational. Like when I see you show up online or when I see you out, you inspire me to do something different, to be better, right? These are things that we can see as evidence that are, are the truth about who we are, right? It grounds us because it's literally, there's literally evidence to show us that this is who I am. So whatever I was telling myself, whatever lies I was repeating in my head, those are obviously not the truth about me, right? And so when we start to replace those things, that is that's that's where our, our self esteem really starts to get built up. That's where we really start to get confident, and we really start to see like, oh wait a minute, I'm actually that girl. <laughs> I'm actually that dude. Like, don't play with me. I know what I'm doing. And so that's those are the things that you have to start to do, and the mindset that you have to start to build. So that you can see, no, I, I I do this already. I do this already. The only thing that I'm struggling with is telling people that I do it and standing in it, owning it, actually owning it and saying it. Well, read me, why don't you? <laughs> I'm look, I'm t I'm telling my own story as I tell yours, I promise you, because that is one of those things that I really had a hard time with. And the thing that's so interesting about this, y'all, is that um, I'm going to be real with y'all. I used to feel I used to be afraid to tell people that I was an influencer. You want to know why I was afraid to tell people that I was an influencer? Because I felt like if I told them I was an influencer and they went on my page and they saw my content, would it look like I was an influencer? I didn't feel like my content was good. I didn't feel like I had enough brand deals because I wasn't really getting brand deals. I became an influencer to promote my own business. 
Um, do I need a partner? What kind of partner? Who are you talking about? Um, I I didn't feel like I was popular enough. I didn't feel like I had the best equipment or best lighting. Um, I didn't have this nice house that I would see the influencers have. And so I felt like to influence with me, that would be, that's a whole nother thing, Mass. That's actually interesting that you said that because I've always loved like when people do content together. I think it's so cute. But um, you're going to get me off topic, though. I can't go into that right now. And so I I would just feel like I can't tell people I'm an influencer because then they're going to see me and they're going to know I'm a fraud. <laughs> and so I wouldn't call myself an influencer. And so even me putting influencer in my bio um, now is like a really big deal. Thank you, Lola. It's a really big deal because... I I wouldn't have done that a few years ago. Like I just wouldn't have cuz I wasn't I was too afraid to do that. Look at Mass growing up. <laughs> yeah, he being he being he being grown today. And so that's the next thing. And so in that all of this all of this helps um all of these things are things that you can write down. It's almost like prompts that you can follow to to keep you um, moving in the right direction and, and help you to document it. And so something that I forgot to say in all of this is that this is really important to put down on paper, pen and paper, not the Google doc, not a voice note, not a video, write it down, write it down. Everything you can, you can, you know, talk about it um, in content. I hear you, ma'am. <laughs> you can talk about it in content. You can talk about the growth in, in this. It, it honestly would make for great content because even while I, while I was doing it, I um, I was documenting it um, in my content as well. So I would do like emails and things like that where the emails, my emails used to be so dope, y'all. Like, if y'all think that my engagement is good now, my emails were dope. Like, people will respond to me in my emails. Like, that's how dope they were. Like, because we just had a good time. I was, like, really vulnerable in there. I almost treated it like a diary. And so I would be really vulnerable. And um, I actually started off talking about I am not shy in my emails, like, years ago. 2019, it was one of my first emails. Um where I was just really like real with people. And so I've had a lot of practice, like just like talking about this concept, but um, yeah. But it, the thing that I did first is I wrote it down. I always kept a journal, I always wrote it down. And so it is, um, it's really imperative because it just helps you to see it. And, and writing in general is just good for you. It's good for our brains. And so I want y'all to, to know that upfront, like, this requires you to write, like, you know, put it down. And so, and it, it might take you some time. It, it might take you, you know, a few days. I mean, for me, writing that list down, I got, I started breaking down in the middle of writing that list and I put my journal down and I walked away from it for like a week. <laughs> I was struggling because I was looking at it and I was like, how am I saying this about myself? What's going on up here? It was really difficult. And so it's not um, it's not a rush, you know, it's not a race, but it is important to get, to put it down so you can see it. OK, so all of this is, is things that you can that you should be using almost like a prompt. All right. So where are we at? How are we feeling about this so far? Are y'all starting to think about some of the things, some of the experiences or even some of the lies that you've been telling yourself? Let me know. Let me know how it's feeling for you. Y'all don't want to be a part of this. See, her fan is here. Oh, my goodness. I treat my journal like a conversation with a younger me. I love that. I love that, Kuma. Mel, I see you got it. Note it. Good. Yeah. Yes. Don't nobody want to feel this. Right. Right. And so and you'll start to realize that you really have been like your biggest hater. Just being real with y'all. You will realize that you have been your biggest hater. 
Not yet, mask. I'm almost done. I got one more point left. I feel seen and heard. Good, Mel. Got it. I don't know how to journal. This is literally how you journal. This is literally how you do it. You're, you're going to go through the, the things you've been telling yourself. First, you're going to decide, I am not shy. And if, you're, if, if I was putting this in a journal, that's literally where I would start. I would declare, I am not shy. And then I would go through and I would make a list of things that I'm telling myself that have been lies. Okay. And so, because mm, I know a lot of people, I know a lot of y'all don't like writing. And when I tell y'all that, you're like, I don't know how to journal. And I feel you. I feel you. And there's a part of me that feels like I need to create one. I used to have a journal. I used to have a journal um, that I, I sold to people. Um, well, actually, no, it was a free journal that I, I used to use, uh, but I have to update it. So, you know, maybe that's something that we can work on together. So here's, okay, because this is giving me good, this is giving me good ideas. So in, in getting unshy, would y'all want us to like work through this together? Like almost kind of like having like prompts so we can actually like have sessions where we journal together or, um, kind of just have like some direction in how we do it. I know Bullock, I know you're already signed up for it. Yes. Okay. Cardi, would that help you? Y'all let me know. Cause we're, we're, we're putting this, we're designing this together. So however y'all need my support, I'm, I'm here to help you. Mel, yes, that will help you. Tax Pearl, sounds like a great idea. Okay. Then we can do that. We can do that. That can be our flow. So we can talk a little bit and we can journal a little bit and um, we can we can move through this together. So uh, cause that's not a problem because I, I realize that I, I don't want to be dismissive of that because I um, well, no, actually, y'all, I would be lying if I said it was hard for me to journal. It's hard for me to journal sometimes. Like I had a period where it was really was difficult because um, I felt like I had too many thoughts in my head and I felt like if I tried to write everything down, I would get. I would be writing a novel. <laughs> I was like, it's too much. Everything's up here. Why would I write everything down? That's that's wild. Like, who has time for that? So I get it. I get that. I get that. I totally get it. And so if you need help with it, that is not an unreasonable thing to ask for help for. And I would love to help y'all with it. I got you. I got you. Yes. OK, so we can do that. And I, honestly, um, I'm going to tell you all this. If you're already on the wait list, we are um, we are. I'm going to start before we launch it for real, for real, which you know, it's not going to take too long to launch it. I maybe should just put it out there. But while we're like getting things rolling, I'll start to um, put prompts in the emails. Um, to start with, and we can start getting just familiar with with writing and stuff like that. So if you're on the wait list, I'm going to email y'all. Check y'all emails. I can give you reminders on TikTok that you got an email, but I got to check y'all emails. <laughs> I'm going to send them in there. So if you signed up, that's how we're communicating for now. Um, and we can we can work this all out. Okay, so that's number four. And then number five is like the part where we really start to see some stuff shake. You said you need help cutting your toes. I can't help you with that, Carl. I can't help you with that. <laughs> the number five is do something about it. That's number five. Do something about it. What you gonna do about it? Like I almost think about like, you know, like, like what you gonna do about it? What, what has shyness held you back from? What has it held you back from? I want y'all to tell me in the comments, what has being shy held you back from? I realized that one of the biggest things that it was holding me back from is my business. I said, oh no, oh no, mm -mm. It, 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 and y'all, y'all know me. Okay. If, if any, you can, you, could you even imagine me allowing like my business to be effective? Does that even sound like me? No. <laughs> no, it don't. Everything, financial freedom, love, relationship, fundraising, seeing my best self. Yes. Jobs. Yes. Promotions. 
networking, making the making the right connections with people and collaborating, starting my business, yes. Telling people about your business once you start it, I'm telling on myself because I've done that. I launched things, y'all. Okay, y'all look. Since we since we here, I feel comfortable sharing this with y'all. That I had um, back when I, I had this idea to do styling, group styling, and I had this idea um, in twenty twenty. Yeah, in 2020. So I had this idea um, and I had this whole program together. Y'all, and this is how serious it is. <laughs> this is how deep it is. I, I created a whole curriculum. I had a, a beta group with my friends where I took them through the process of like revamping their wardrobe and discovering their style. And it was like my way of helping them to... Um, to feel confident with what they had in their closet. And also for me, it was to help me test out if this was something that could work, right? So I created this whole thing. I had presentations. I had the course uploaded on my website. I had all the things. But you want to know what I didn't do? I did not promote it. <laughs> I never talked about it. I never marketed it. I never told anyone that I was launching it. And I found it, I, I found it because I have, I've had multiple websites over the years. And so um, I found it on my old Wix account. I didn't tell anybody about it, y'all. I never launched it. I never launched it. You just heard a lady say she was making a styling planner. I made a style journal. I have an entire journal. Yes. <laughs> yes. I have an actual journal. And it was like an actual physical journal. And you could you could literally go through this whole process in this journal and discover your style, detox your closet, revamp your style and build a capsule wardrobe if that's what you wanted to do. A whole journal. That was the part where I didn't do something about it. I was I was way too afraid to tell people that I made it. I spent all this time working on it and I never promoted it. I, I barely talked about it. Bring it back. I, you know, and, and honestly, it ain't go nowhere. <laughs> I was thinking about fashion last night. I would have to, I would have to really bring it into, like tie it into the um, branding now, since I don't do just like styling anymore. She said, said with weekly check-in and photo. Yeah. It was like a whole, like there was like at the end, there was a style challenge. And a 30 day style challenge. Y'all, this journal was fire. I have, I honestly, in the moment, I just couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. I was like, nobody wants a journal. Created my own eyelash line and sunglasses line and never promoted it as well. Yeah. That's what happens. We develop these products, we develop these services, and or we create these awesome business ideas, but we allow this this idea that we're we're not worthy of it, that we're too shy to talk about it, or even some of us feel like we need to have somebody else to be our ambassador. We need to have somebody else talk about it. Nobody wants to see me talk about it. You can worry about ambassadors. You can worry about influencers. You can worry about that later. But the thing that's important right now is that you got to show up for you. You got to show up for you first. You got to be your first influencer for your business, for your brand. I think that's my problem. I don't see what's going to come out of it, what I want to put out. Yeah. Keep trying to do it all on my own. Yeah. That's another one that holds us back. 
you need that push and hype man. And you know what? I I agree that the the push and the hype man, they definitely help, especially in the moment. Hey Ron, good evening. Um, it helps in the moment, but what we really need more than that is the discipline to show up. And so that's what that's what this whole like process goes through. <laughs> yes, it's me. That's what this whole process goes through is this is a this is a discipline. So the do something about it part is the part where it really you really start to see the action. So everything else that we did one through four were the steps that were that involve the inner work, the healing, because that's a big bulk of like what holds us up. And then taking the steps are the parts that are, um, they they become, I want to say they become easier, but I feel like that's not the right word. But it's the part where you get to see, no, here's how it is. It's the part where you get to see all of that work that you did on yourself. You get to see, you get to show, you get to see what you show for it. Yeah, you get the results. You get to see it in action. Like I get to see the fact that I've done so much work to no longer be a shy person that I can talk about my experiences with y'all and be vulnerable and be real. That's 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 a result of the work that I did. And, and the part where I did something about it is I put the content out. I created the wait list. I showed up for these lives. I'm, and I'm doing something. I'm doing something about it. I'm doing the work because I recognize that being shy held me back from these things. Trusting in yourself gets easier. Yes, you're building trust in yourself because that's that's really what is a result. That's what is a result of when we have low self esteem. When we are struggling with believing in ourselves, it's because we we've lost trust in ourselves somewhere along the lines. And that's why earlier I mentioned the concept of forgiveness and I mentioned the concept of. Um, no, I think it was just forgiveness that I really like touched on, but the, the concept of forgiveness and it, it being directly related to your self-esteem. And that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother topic, um, a conversation that I can talk about because people will fight me on that. They will fight me on that. They'll be like, no, nah, I don't need to forgive because I'm I'm I I've I don't need to worry about that. I'm good. Like I'm confident. I believe in myself. I don't need to forgive them. I just don't think about them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I've noticed about myself. Okay. I've done a lot of work to literally forgive people, like practical steps to forgive. And I have seen my self-esteem grow as a result of it because when you forgive yourself, you build that trust. When you forgive others, you're building trust again. And maybe it's not trust in them. Maybe that relationship won't work anymore, but you still let it go. It's not holding you back. It's not weighing you down. And it's not, it's not something that's constantly replaying in your mind and in your heart. And so that, that building up of that trust, that confidence that's real. And that's what, that's what it does for us. And so, um, that's what I want y'all to leave with. So I'm going to go through the steps again. And then, um, if y'all want to come up and talk about it, we can definitely talk about it, um, for a little bit, cause I'm a little tired now, <laughs> but if y'all want to like, talk about like what you think about it or ask me any questions and of course, come up, I'm gonna open the box for y'all. And then, um, open the boxes. I got I got to watch how I say stuff cuz it can it can go left really fast. I can open up the boxes. Okay. So, um here let's go okay, let's just go through the steps. I'm getting distracted. Okay. <laughs> I did that in, I did that in another video. I was like, "Oh wait, no. I ain't mean it like that, y'all. I'm a ride." <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I was like, man, people, they're going to think that you were nasty. That's not what I meant, y'all. Oh, my gosh. Oh, 
it, yeah, it got real, real fast. I was like, hold up, strike that, reverse it, guest boxes. Okay, so let's go through the steps and then we can <laughs> we can talk. So getting us shy, here are the steps, y'all. The first one is decide if you are shy <laughs> or if you are wounded. Favorite video ever. Yeah, you, when you pulled that clip, I could not stop crying. It was so funny. Um, number two is acknowledge the lies you've been telling yourself. Number three, recognize the experience that triggers the lies. Okay. You're going to be sleep. That's okay, mask. That's okay. I appreciate you wanting to come up and talk to me though. Number four, replace the lies with the truth. Not just positive things, but the truth about yourself. And number five, I feel like I said number five twice, but that last one was number four. Number five is do something about it. What has being shy held you back from? What has it taken from you? What blessings are being blocked because you keep saying you're shy? And that is, those are probably the things that need to be at the top of your list to implement and start so that we can work through this process of getting us shy. And that's it, y'all. We did it. We did it. It's all good. It's all good. So I am so excited. Again, if y'all want to be a part of the wait list and, and be a part of this movement and work through this with a community of people, you see some of the people are already in the chat, like some of the people that are going to be there. And if you, I mean, if you ain't noticed, there are, they're incredible people, right? So you're going to be surrounded with amazing people and we are going to work through this together and right now it's looking like it's going to be group sessions where we journal and we talk this thing out and then we decide what we're going to do to get out of it okay so i hope that i see y'all there um and it is going to be a pay what you want so i'm gonna set it up so that you can literally pay whatever you want to um i'm gonna set a minimum i don't know what the minimum is going to be just yet but it's going to be a pay what you can type situation. So if you want to be a part of it, don't let the finances get in the way. All right. Um, so all that information is going to be given to you on the wait list in the emails. And that's that. <laughs>